Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh, K-I-6-N-A-Z, also known as Hosh Nasi, and I got a fun video review for you today on the Redivis RT-82, a DMR dual band radio. The RT-88 is a fraternal twin to the TYT MD-2007, so for the sake of this review, what I say about this radio is going to be likely the same for the TYT. This radio was provided to me by Redivis for review. This is not a paid for review. Uh, these opinions are my own, so let's get started. As always, I like to kick off all my reviews talking about the specs of the radio. The Redivis RT-82, as I mentioned, is a dual band radio operating on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. This is a DMR radio. What makes this kind of unique and why people are kind of excited about it is it's one of the first DMR radios that is dual band. Most DMR radios are 70 centimeters only. This has a great analog capability. Yeah, apparently you uh, had a diversion thing and it was a good thing and it knocked down a felony to a misdemeanor or something, something like that. Seems pretty humane and reasonable. The yeah. interesting features are it is IPv67 waterproof. It actually has a little door here that keeps water out. This is also your accessory port for the programming cable and the microphone. The radio comes with the programming cable, which is a nice touch, although once you realize uh, how DMR works, it's pretty much a requirement that you have to program this with a computer. For those that understand DMR, this is a DMR Tier 1 and Tier 2 fully compatible radio. It supports up to 10,000 contacts, that's the actual call signs of people that are registered in the DMR system, and it has 3,000 channels that you can load. Channels would be repeaters, either analog or digital. And aside from that, it has all the standard features you would expect, CCTS tones, Vox, and a snappy belt clip. Also, I love this little thing, look, it says owner on the side of it. So you can put your name there, put your call sign. It's like putting your name in your underwear. Pretty cool. There's two models available for this radio. There's a GPS model, which is this one, and a non-GPS model. Redivis and TYT provide firmware for whichever radio you have, and there are certain capabilities that come across for the non-GPS enabled one, like recording capability. The battery is a 2200 milliamp hour battery, and lasts about the whole day with moderate use, and has a max 5 watt output on UHF and 4 watt output on VHF. So let's talk about some of my favorite things about this radio right up front. I love the fit and finish of this radio. I like the build quality, I like the buttons, I like all of that stuff. I like the chunky knob. I'm a big form um, over function guy when it comes to handy talky radios. I like the look and feel of them. Um, um, of course they have to function, but I really like the the textures and all that. This texturally kind of feels like a commercial radio. I'm not gonna give a knock to anybody in Motorola, but it gives you a feeling like a Motorola radio. And as far as receive and transmit capability, it's very good. This being my first DMR radio, this is the only thing that I can compare it to is analog radios. Its analog capability is equal to that of, of some of my better HTs. The DMR quality, I'm told from the people I talk to when they hear my transmissions, are very good. And the receive capability is very loud and the speaker's loud and it's very enjoyable from that point of view. Now they got tubes in them, but there's, the tires are tubeless ready. So I don't know what you have to do. Just very uh, loud. Put that fly in this is where things get complicated. Now I'm gonna talk about what I don't really like about the radio. The first thing, and, and the easiest thing to talk about, is this, this trackball. This trackball is very reminiscent of the Blackberries from the early 2000s. It, it clicks and it slides around, and sometimes it's a little too accurate, and sometimes it's not accurate enough. Um, you can, however, mitigate this by remapping the front face buttons and the side buttons, and even this little top button, to do most of the functionality of that button. So that's not that big a thing, actually. But there's kind of a larger problem we need to talk about. And that problem is, is no problem with this radio. It's no issue with this radio. This radio is actually one of the better showings for DMR because it is dual band. However, the problem is that it's DMR. That's not to say I dislike DMR, far from it. This is my first DMR radio and I'm having fun using DMR. But I acknowledge where the shortcoming is and that's in the programming. There's two kinds of people that watch this video, that are watching me right now, that watch my videos. Uh, one, people that are looking for a, more information about this particular radio and, and for you that are interested and already indoctrinated to DMR, this is gonna be great. It's a good DMR radio. It's probably one of the better ones out on the market right now, particularly because it's VHF, UHF. However, a lot of other people, subscribers of mine and whatnot, they're looking for the next radio, something to jump to from a Baofeng or whatever. Is DMR that radio or that type of radio? Maybe not. Let me try to explain why. 
So a mainstay of my channel is that I respect and uh, like to learn about all aspects of ham radio. There are some aspects of ham radio that are more complicated and more esoteric in certain ways than others, and I think DMR is one of them. DMR was, in its uh, original state, a commercial radio system that was used for companies that wanted to communicate with smaller groups of people, uh, drivers, and maybe engineers, and maybe security. And they'd create separate talk groups, or they'd create separate color codes, and these are all terms that are a part of DMR. People that know DMR know these. And uh, when amateur radio got access to it, it felt like it was almost kind of shoehorned into the amateur radio hobby. This is not a disparaging comment against D DMR, it's just my feelings towards it. So. If you're someone who enjoys the complexity of programming a radio and some of the difficulties that can come from it, DMR is probably for you. It, it, there is some complexities. I definitely was left scratching my head for a couple hours there when I first received the radio. But fear not, there is hope. As always, the internet is the solver of most things. Uh, there is a wealth of communities out there for the Redivis and the TYT on Facebook. There are also DMR repeater groups that already have code plugs for this radio. A code plug is the kind of programming software for the radio. It includes not just the, the contacts, the people who have a DMR registered ID, but also contacts for different repeaters that may be in your area. Let's dive in a little deeper on that. To be able to use DMR, you need to register for an ID, and you use your call sign to get that ID. I have my ID. That's why this radio works, and that's why I can talk on it. Now, once you have that, you can program in repeaters, or what they're called as channels, or contacts. Uh, channels, yeah, right? Channels. And so repeaters are channels, and channels work on time slots. Each repeater has two time slots, and there's also a color code. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what does that have to do with amateur radio? Well. Again, this is kind of a shoehorning of a commercial radio concept into ham radio, but it kind of works because what it allows you to do is it allows you to have multiple conversations going on through the same repeater. How do you do that? Well, again, it's because it's digital. It allows you to send the digital out of the R out, out here via the RF, and the repeater can separate the two channels into their own thing. And so while you get audio on the receive side that is pleasant, although digital sounding. Big signal and everything's coming in good. Not a whole lot, but just kind of a rehash of what's been going on the last week or so. The Orange County luncheon was last Saturday and we had 24 hams that attended the meeting. Now, of course, DMR has some inherent advantages, which are very important that you understand. Um, analog radio, as you get further away from the transmitter, the sound begins to fade. DMR doesn't work that way. As long as you're within the propagation area, you're going to hear the voice, the digitized voice, very well. It may be a little robotic in some cases, but it's going to sound really good and really crisp. So something else that's fun with DMR is they're likely all um, linked. That allows you to create talk groups, and the talk groups can be anything like, well, here I'm looking at uh, local, local, this particular area of Santiago Peak repeaters. But if I go one over... Two. Now I'm on SoCal, on the third channel, all of Southern California, linked repeaters. Very cool, and it's displayed digitally. Now, you can still do this with analog systems. I'm thinking of the wind system, for example, which is in Southern California. A bunch of linked repeaters that actually go across the world, I believe, all the way through Japan and other countries. But uh, DMR allows you to see it displayed because you've programmed the radio this way. That's complex to do. You don't just sit down and do that. You don't just sit down and go, now I'm going to program these all these crosslink repeaters. You can, but you're going to have to know what you're doing. So, who do I think this radio is for? Which is usually the end cap of my video reviews. This radio is for someone who is interested in DMR, wants to get involved in DMR, great place to start. This is also for somebody who already is knowledgeable about DMR and wants to maybe get another HT, possibly something that is VHF, UHF. Who it is not for, I would uh, recommend that people that are newer to ham radio get used to analog. Understand just how talking on a repeater works. Just a repeater. Uh, maybe splash in a little bit of echo link, but I don't even go that far. Just. Just learn radio. Learn radio is some of the most important thing you can do. Just talking to people, understanding how it works, how you get onto repeaters and whatnot. Uh, that takes nothing away from this. This is a good radio. Its analog capability is very good. And someone may ask, well, what if I just bought this and only used it in analog? Well, there's some complexities there too. So as of my recording this, there was only one software product that was available to program the radio. And that's the software that's created by Redivis. 
If there's a different one, please post in the comments below. But there's no chirp equivalent, and um, if you've watched any of my other videos with chirp, you know that you can just query for the repeaters that you want to add to your radio. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. In this case, you're doing all the legwork on your own. You really have to know the repeaters, even the analog repeaters that you're putting in. You have to specify your receive and your input and what tones you want on either one. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't me saying avoid this because it's more complicated. Uh, far from it. I love complex things. I like this radio. I give it a recommendation. I'm saying that there are a myriad of different people that fit different buckets of ham radio, and your mileage will vary depending on how you think of the value of this particular radio. So to recap very quickly, if you made it this far, I like the buttons, I like the case, the belt clip's okay, I love the name tag. This little jog dial is not great, um, but it's mitigated by the buttons. DMR is complicated, you should have already known this. Other than that, it's a great radio. <laughs> Lots of fun. I've had a lot of fun reviewing it, thanks to Redivis for giving me the opportunity to play around with this. Um, this will remain in my stable. In fact, um, I've been playing around with my own code plug. I downloaded a code plug for the PAPA repeater system, which I'm not a member, but thanks to the PAPA system for letting me just listen and kind of get a better understanding and talk to some of the people out there. Uh, I now have a much better understanding of DMR now. So I'm building my own code plug and working on it, and I may make that available to people that are in Southern California if there's an interest for it. Post in the comments below if you are. Hey guys, and that'll do it. Anyway, this is Hosh Nasi, KI6NAZ. I am uh, live streaming every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you have not already, please subscribe and check out my Patreon, if you will. I do newsletters every week and I have special um, perks for those that follow me, including stuff that happens on the live stream. So love it if you check that out. Make sure you click that bell and I'll talk to you later.